Many people want to navigate life with peace and joy, but struggle to connect to their intuition. They find themselves overwhelmed, burned out, and frustrated. My name is Francesca Phillips, and I'm obsessed with spirituality and psychology and how the two can intersect to help you live a successful and intuitive life. I believe each of us can accomplish amazing things through balance and healthy habits instead of burnout. Consider this your go-to resource for where spiritual wellness and mindful productivity meets practical wisdom. If you're craving positivity and want to know how to find the answers within, instead of searching endlessly without, then you're in the right place. Get ready to feel supported and inspired. This is the Good Space Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Good Space Podcast's intro episode. The purpose behind this episode is to share the intention behind the podcast, more about who I am, and what you can expect moving forward. This podcast was created mainly because it's the number one thing readers of our weekly blog post asked for. I realize many of you are busy, driven people who love the weekly posts, but want a different way to consume the info when you're on the go. The deeper intention, however, behind the good space is to remove any barriers you may have to learning spiritual principles and using them to create a peaceful and intuitive life. I've met many people who said they were curious about spirituality and having better energy, but as soon as they started searching online, they felt overwhelmed and confused. They struggled to understand how the broad theoretical information could influence their real life on a day-to-day basis. The funny thing is my husband Matt is the one who ultimately inspired me to start The Good Space. It was because of him the aha moment happened, so here's how it goes. Back in 2015, we started living abroad in Zurich, Switzerland for his job. He's a lawyer, and as you can imagine, his work can be stressful and demanding. I couldn't legally work, so I was running an online clothing resale business that operated in the States as well as experimenting with my love of writing. I started doing a lot of Instagram Lives on my personal account and writing articles about law of attraction, intuition, and more. On the night of the inspiration, we were in Geneva for his work. Matt was completely wiped out from exhaustion after a long day. It was around 11 p.m. or midnight in our dark hotel room. He went to use the bathroom as I was falling asleep, and when he came back into the room, it was still pitch dark, and he says, Honey, you talk a lot about manifesting energy and alignment, but how do you do it? I don't have the time or capacity to read all the books you're reading, so if you could tell me three things I could do tomorrow to help me experience what you're talking about, what would it be? That's when the light bulb went off, the aha moment. My heart was also pounding so hard it felt like a boxer was hitting it. My husband was curious about manifesting an alignment. I had dreamed for so long for this moment to talk to him about this. Mr. Science and Intellectual, he wanted to know more, so I thought to myself, I better make this count. I ended up telling him to let me think about it and get back to him. But that night, my mind was racing. There were people out there missing out on a joyful and mindful life because they felt overwhelmed, nervous, unsure. This was unacceptable. No one should have to continue feeling worried, stressed, and hopeless because they think this information is out of reach, untouchable, or something that requires hours and months to get. That's the moment I knew there needed to be a place online that simplifies spiritual wellness, where spiritual concepts are broken down in a way that's practical, usable right now, and refreshing. The information needs to feel approachable. You deserve to live as your most authentic self, without manipulation from others, without the pressures or influences from society. The world needs the gifts you have. I want you to be able to develop them and use them with game-changing power. Consider the good space your translator that turns woo-woo ideas into actionable steps. The goal is to keep it real, not the ivory tower theory stuff, but how can the average person incorporate this info into their lives? We'll talk about a mix of topics like intuition, ego, law of attraction, also about how to be mindful and productive. I believe that being deliberate with your time is owning the fact that life is sacred and showing you value the sacredness of it by being deliberate with your time. It goes hand in hand with mindfulness. Many people struggle with staying too safe and complacent or hustling to the point of burnout. Finding that sweet spot can be tough. The goal here is to help you find the good space in your life, whatever that looks like for you, in your work, relationships, and family. It's easy to become so wrapped up in the doing part of life that you forget how to stay energetically aligned and present in the everyday. I want to show you, you don't need burnout to succeed. That through taking the time to be first, you show up in the doing part of life with more power and fulfillment. 
To be clear, being interested in spirituality doesn't mean you have to all of a sudden change your job, leave a relationship, or start a new life. This isn't only reserved for the hippies or the free spirits of the world. True intentional living and mindfulness means you live your life lightly with the least resistance as possible. You have intentional habits and tools that take you through your day with the most ease, however that looks for you. I want this to be a public space for you to explore truth and feel safe doing it. I hope the conversations created here feel like a chat with a friend and like you don't have to do this alone. Okay, if we're going to be friends here, you probably are wondering, who am I? My name's Francesca Phillips, and I've been a creative spirit and natural connector ever since I can remember. I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and you'd always find me writing in my journal, creating songs, and starting my own girl groups to perform with. It was the Spice Girls era, so let's keep it real here. (laughs) After high school, I moved to Los Angeles to pursue a dream to become a singer and songwriter. Before getting my first job in the music industry, I worked at a bank as a teller, and I went to school full-time for my bachelor's degree in psychology. Self-development and psychology has always been a second love of mine to music. I read all the books and also ran a mastermind group before it was a buzzword. After a year and a half, I got my first job at a popular songwriting production company, Rock Mafia Records, managing the day-to-day for a girl group they signed. They were also writing songs at the time for Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, among others. I got the job through a connection I kept in contact with for six months. She got a big executive job at ASCAP and asked me to take her spot. Networking is powerful, people. And a note as well that patience is powerful. It took six diligent months of reaching out, offering help, checking in for that opportunity to come to me. After a year or so, I started working for the music manager who managed the girl group at Rock Mafia. He also managed Sierra, Mindless Behavior, and in the past, his clients ranged from Backstreet Boys, Janet Jackson, and more. It was pretty awesome. I'd go to numerous live shows, music video shoots, meetings, and even tapings of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, which the girl group had a guest appearance on. But you know what sucked? After six years, I realized I didn't feel happy going down the path I was. I tried songwriting but didn't like the environment or people. I tried managing but didn't want to do that either. The straw that broke the camel's back was when my boss threw me under the bus when I tried to go work for Scooter Braun. I met Scooter at an award show and we later had an amazing phone conversation. I was just an assistant but he took the time to really talk to me, hear me, and have a wonderful conversation. I don't know how else to explain it because during that time people looked at us at assistants as nothing, as beneath them, and they weren't often treated very well. So this was such a refreshing moment. He invited me to come to his company barbecue and potentially start working with him. When he asked if my boss knew I was meeting with him, I told him no, but that out of loyalty, I would tell him, wrong move. I wish I knew then what I knew now. My boss ended up yelling at me, then calling Scooter and saying everything he could about me. His pride was hurt because I wanted to work for another manager and not continue to work for him. At the time, I felt really bad and didn't show up to the barbecue, although Scooter gave me the choice to come or not. And the person I am now, I would have shown up and kept going because Scooter was one of the few people I met who actually cared. He was doing good things in the business, and if I couldn't be a part of it, then I didn't want to be at all. That's when I decided to get my first temp job in marketing. I figured it was still writing and seemed fun. Shortly after that, I worked for an awesome tech company for a few months. Then I got engaged and moved to Switzerland for my now husband's job. Talk about a whole lot of change in just a few months. My whole life at that point felt like a bunch of restarts. Although I felt blessed to have the experiences I did in music, then getting married and living in Europe when I had only dreamed of visiting, I still woke up depressed. It felt like my life would never make sense and I wouldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. After being sick of waking up at 11 a.m. and watching Gossip Girl all day in our tiny Zurich studio apartment, I decided to try a morning routine. It was something I read about online and that a few friends swore by. That's when everything changed. I started waking up earlier naturally and feeling excited about the day. I didn't feel as scared to explore the city and felt inspired again. I also read a lot of books. My inner life felt alive again. I still felt alone though, disconnected from my family and friends physically and craving a way to talk about everything I was learning. That's when the idea to start Bloom Daily Blog came about, a blog that was meant to share books, thoughts, and ideas with people who loved growth as much as I did. I started writing weekly blog posts, editing and ghostwriting for clients, and learning more about marketing. I kept growing Bloom Daily Blog, but after a few years, I felt stagnant, as if a big stop sign was placed in my path. I really felt confused because I thought this was exactly where I was supposed to be headed. 
After much prayer and staying silent to listen to my intuition, that's when I received the aha moment in Geneva. That's when I knew I needed to pivot. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, here's what to expect. A new show will be released every Tuesday and will alternate between solo shows, which are around 20 minutes, and interviews with experts and interesting, inspiring people that'll be 45 to 50 minutes. I believe in training our minds to think differently by listening to affirmations, so I'll include some in each episode for you to practice new thoughts. I'll also answer listener questions, so if you want to be mentioned in the show, make sure to send in your cue. The email address is in the show notes and make sure to subscribe to the show as well. And if you want to jumpstart your life and feel excited again, I have an amazing morning routine guide that teaches you exactly how to make your own. It's the exact process that I went to that completely changed my life. You'll love it. The download link is in the show notes. All right. I hope you enjoyed this intro and the episodes that are ahead. See you soon, my friend.